that's what Ryan does. Starting, yeah, we're starting something new. We used to do like an intro where we would uh, make shit up about the person. Just just I straight would, up lie and attack just them. Just make up a complete verbally. backstory. Yeah, I would make up a complete backstory about the person, and uh, and then we would go. So then we were like, there was too many times where we were chatting for a while, and there was like good shit. Or like we should oh, hit record. Fair. You know, that's fair. I think that I feel like yeah. that happens. Like, we want to come out of the gate hot, so that's fair. Yeah, I feel like that's what most people want. They just want to be like wowed right away. Got a strong that's hook, it. right? That's it. Yeah. Strong hook. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alex, it's funny you <clears throat> obviously with with good reason you 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 found my page and you were like, <laughs> obviously I have to follow this guy. Uh, but, but I was following you first and I saw that and I was like, Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw you on Ryan Kassam's podcast and I was like, I need to reach out to this person, uh, and get connected with you from him. But then you ended up following me. So I was like, Oh, fuck it. I'll shoot you a message and yeah, it worked out. On. And then less than 24 hours later, we're here hanging out. <laughs> it worked out really well. I know yeah, I usually yeah. keep my Fridays open. So it ended up being like perfect timing. Yeah, yeah, I found your guys' podcast and then I just found both of you guys online and I was like, oh, okay. And I saw you were following me and so that's why I was like, fall back. We're the, we're the dynamic duo. <laughs> we are. This, it, it, we never know what direction. This can get awkward. It can get fun. We'll get, we get, uh, gets I was weird. Like, it gets weird. It's only Jimmy, awkward you, if you make it awkward. Jimmy, can I comment on your outfit? You look incredible. Is that a sweater? I was going to say he looks like a scientist. A is that cardigan. a sweater or is it a jacket? It's, it's a cardigan. It's a, it's a, and then you have a, a cut. cardigan. So you're you're <laughs> have a professional cut. on the outside yeah. and you're a fucking Philly right. piece of shit underneath. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a male stripper when I do that. You right look now. like a male stripper. Um, yeah, it's a little, uh, it's like a sweatshirt material. Cardigan. Okay. I picked it up at Target. I went to nice. get a vacuum cleaner. Target. Target. And I was yeah. like, elegant Ooh, with the I have, cardigan. Yeah, I have a lot of cardigans. And uh, I can never get enough cardigans. And I don't have like a cream colored one. So I was like, no, get that. no, that's, go. that's, that's gorgeous. Thank you. You're yeah, gorgeous, <laughs> Aram. Well, thank you. I feel really good today. Yeah. How are you? Am Tell I, me am about I interrupting today. something? No, just ab- enjoy this. No. Aram. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> it can get really toxic we, between us. So, like, so whenever, like... <laughs> whenever, whenever we're actually complimenting one another, it's, it's a good thing, Alex. And you're, I think you're, I think you're the catalyst for positive change. I appreciate that. She has this, you guys will have to watch on YouTube. If you don't know Alex, definitely follow her. She has a contagious smile. Very nice smile. (laughs) And I think, I think it's radiating to both of us and it's making us much more pleasant towards one another. So I think we'll just, maybe you could just be a third. Maybe we'll just have a couple, three. uh, No, I think, I think you and me can finally, you know, experience the voyeurism <laughs> the voyeurism that we've always wanted we, you you and me will just make verbal love to each other mm-hmm. and alex and she'll watch can watch yep which I I think think is she quarter, or she could or she could quarterback it and lead us in the right direction i don't know anything about football so i don't know what i was like qu- quarterback quarter, or corn they're, corn they're the one who like throws the ball they like lead everybody they tell people they're the do. team leader oh i yeah. thought you said cornerback and i was like oh. do they lead but you said quarterback yeah. Speaking of which, has anybody watched the roast of Tom Brady? I did. I started to, and, and then thoughts? I was interrupted. So I need. To, I think it's and, so fucking funny. Well, uh, Nikki Glaser was, I think, the best. She one. She murdered. That She's wasn't a joke. That was murder. Her so, one so about like the eight thing. rings. I you died. Have to, you so have good. to look up her on Howard Stern. She oh. tell, oh she tells the jokes that she did not say. <gasps> Yeah, oh. I can't, well, especially Howard Stern, I can't even imagine what type of actual uh, like. <laughs> yeah, I just if oh, you go gosh. on, I think it's like uh, ne- comedy is a joke or Netflix is a joke. Yes, on yes, their yes, Instagram. yes. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Netflix is a joke. You'll see clips of I think it was on that one of her on Stern telling the jokes that she didn't say, which was I I can only imagine how unhinged they were. Just everyone was going for Giselle. I I knew exactly where they were going to go with it. Yeah, it's an it got- easy target. It got a little cheap. I think I was actually very impressed by the writing that they did on behalf of the football players. Because I mean, I didn't watch the full thing yet. I just saw Nikki Glazers and uh, some Kevin Hart. Yeah. When you get to and the then when I saw you get Kim to when Kardashians, you, and actually even hers she wasn't was bad. Good. She did I'm good. Like, wow. She was good. But I was it's like, you're, you're good. 
She it's actually one... talked like a normal human. She wasn't like, and I don't know. Yeah. Nah, nah. I have never watched a single episode of The Kardashians, so I Neither can't even. I. Yeah. yeah. I always feel I bad because first. everyone's like, it's such good reality TV. And I'm like, I. How could you put good and reality TV in the same sentence? Some people I... love it. Like The Bachelor. I just, I think that those people are so craving a life that they don't have that they like lean into these reality TV shows. I, like, I feel triggered. Like, I feel triggered. I feel triggered. I feel triggered. Do you watch reality TV? Love is blind. Love on the spectrum. <laughs> you watch They're Love all... on the spectrum? Is that because My you relate? Is that, is that because you relate to blind. it? Really? You're yeah, actually dating like... somebody from Love is Blind? Yeah, and it was so weird because apparently he was like the bad boy on his episode, but then now it's been like years, and now he's like a, a new person, and it's it's all great. Oh, and I'm like, mm. and I I felt so bad because I was like, oh, like you, we put it online. Did anyone actually know who he was? And she was like, everyone knew who he was. And I was like, oh, that's shocking because I had no idea who this person was at all. <laughs> well, that's I, my uh... thing. People like idolize them, and I'm like, oh. it's so yeah. weird how you'll just take a regular person and put them on something, and then we're in all of them. I if I could ever be on Big Brother, I would do that in a heartbeat. Heartbeat. But that's not like reality Big, TV. I mean, it's, it's like it's Survivor, still but in a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Brother that, could be That cool. would work. I would like to be for sure. I'd, I'd I wouldn't be right smiley down. like this. I'd be, I'd be playing the game. You'd be yeah. in the zone? I, I think, for sure. I think what people forget with Big Brother is how much they are sitting there in solitude. I know. Like, you go nuts. If you, if you ever watch... That. Like any of those, whatever. The, the like background the, stuff. Yeah. Because the there's no stuff. music allowed. There's nothing. no nothing. And They're you can't just... even start humming. I saw people like get in trouble because they would like start humming stuff. Yeah. But copyright, you can't do that. Yeah. Really? And then there's like, there was yeah. times. I've seen clips where they're talking about previous seasons. And they're like, Jim to the diary room. Like you you're, you are not to be talking about these things. Like, what? You, there's certain things they're not allowed seasons. to talk about. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. if you, if I don't know if you. I'm sure, Rom, you've heard of the book 1984. I've George Orwell? Book 19. George Orwell. Yeah. I yeah. I love you read it? <laughs> okay. I don't I know. I'm school, like old. I don't, fair, I don't know. If I never, I was... never, I don't read, but I, I read it in I, school. I, I know okay. it. Okay. Yeah, so you remember it. it? That was Big Brother. That's yeah. what Big Brother is. You yeah. know, it's like they're watching every single thing and all that. Yeah. And then you're, when you're watching the show behind the scenes, you realize how Big Brother it is. So you like, mean oh, Biden's yeah. America? You mean Biden's America? Yes. Got it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> we had to, we, Biden. We had to, we had to, oh, we had to, Biden's we had, America. Biden. I yeah, think we, had to, we had to throw in saying. just a little bit of a little bit of political rhetoric. Just, I don't think I've just, listened to enough of your podcast. I didn't realize it We don't talk about politics. like barely, barely ever <laughs> talk about politics. I saw a shot. I took it. Yeah. So tell us. Anyway, I mean, that's actually a great segue, which is one of Aram's favorite words. <laughs> it is my who, favorite word. Who do you plan on voting for this election? I don't know yet. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I think. I heard Mickey Mouse is a great one to vote for. I think. Uh, is he I like? Would, it, what do you? Yeah, I would do. Does Mickey. your shirt have something on it? My shirt I think has, it has Mickey, Mickey Mouse. or something on it. Yeah. I think it has Mickey. Mouse I think he on agrees it. that I can't actually see it. Yeah, it's, Mickey it's like Mouse. the whole shirt's like black. It is black, and it's. I know the quality isn't good while we're recording, but there, I think if, if we truly want a, an awesome demographic. Uh, democratic system what we should do is we should have one politician from each side we should have one actor who rep represents one of the political parties we should have one athlete that represents one of the political parties and then we should have one reality tv star that represents one of, and then that should be our choices and then we can I extend it into like i don't understand I'm well no oh, because now now we have all just like we just have more together no we just have more choices now so think about it oh. this way it'd be like well maybe like the rock is more on like the republican side of of acting and then maybe like i don't know tom hanks is more tom on the hanks Democrat. i was gonna right. say tom look at us we are in sync we friend. are so and then like a musical star like maybe like you have like like miley cyrus is gonna run for president she's more on the democratic side and maybe like pink is more on the republican side and now you have like a lot of really nice choices and it could be like it could be like you walk into the voting booth and it's actually fun now, Fuck are you as opposed I don't to walking. It's supposed to be like fun. Well, <laughs> it's not effective. It, it, ha it hasn't been no. effective in thirty fucking years. So what's the difference no. at this point? It, it could it, it could literally. My dog could run for president, and she would do a better job. No, we need a complete wipeout of every person in every position. One hundred percent. The Congress well, I mean, gone. 
2028 all of Congress gone. voting for a different person for every single nobody can be renewed a non-renewal yeah, and, and foreign people are good like foreign people are fine now like we should just open up the they, I, Alex, I should be able to run Alex this is where th- there we go this is where Aram talks about how he was born in Russia and he's like an immigrant and stuff like I that. should be able to run for president now like why not yes. it's I think the statute of limitations has passed I'm, I've been no. here paying taxes your, now for 30 your years father, your father was a criminal you can't it's fine most of the presidential candidates fathers were criminals look at Donald Trump <laughs> most of the presidents were criminals <laughs> exactly so what the fuck <laughs> the <difference? laughs> We do talk. We do talk about nutrition, and fitness. I was really, life. I was really, I was like, so what podcast am I on? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You yeah, know? I mean, no, you're good. You're good. It's played out, right? Like, eat your protein, lift your weights, drink your We're water, tired. shut the fuck up. Like, it's that's that's basically our message. Like, <laughs> sleep, I, I personally, and I've said sleep that I'm like, oh, sometimes. I'm, I'm tired of talking about, about fitness. Fucking macro I'm, I'm just tired of it. that's fair because you know I, mean? I feel like it is I, a lot of the same conversations it is hey so actually i want to talk about something controversial paul saladino yes. just yes. reversed his whole carnivore stance is he so is, is so is he eating carbs now oh you guys didn't see that he was no. on a podcast and he said he realized that being keto long term for him and for most people, like vor- verbatim said for him and for most people, probably isn't the healthiest thing. And now a lot of people are coming forward basically being like, we've told you this for a really long time. I give him props for, <laughs> for him. saying I, that he recognized that I he don't. messed up. I don't. I don't. Because that's Ooh, all he does. This is why. Because that's all he does. I feel that like is, he, he had his stance yeah. and then he, you know what? How I'm many evolved. times has he said I'm wrong? I think multiple times. Oh, because really? Rich, well, yeah, he, I forget what his first stance was. He started then eating he became fruit. Carnivore, and then he became carnivore uh, 2.0 where he said right. fruit, yeah. but still no veggies. And yeah. now it's like it's like he rides it out until he can't. Mm-hmm. And then he so humbly, he so humbly says, I was wrong. And that's what makes a great coach is you can admit that you were wrong. Oh. True. True. It, it, to be fair, it, it does, but I see what you're saying. I think people don't understand the full impact of what he has done and how it's going to, how it's negatively impacted so many people's yeah. lives. And now so many of those people don't know what to believe, even yeah. if he's saying like, cause you guys didn't even know when you guys are in the health and fitness space. A lot I know, but my, but my it. algorithm doesn't show me that stuff. Cause I don't, I don't Probably go down those rabbit holes anymore. Like I, people send me stuff and I just, I don't even look at it. My, my explore page is dogs, horror movies and, and whores. Usually whores, yeah. Whores? Like prostitutes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, prostitutes. Alex, question. I feel like I should have listened to more of these podcast episodes before yeah. I agreed to come on. They're, I will say that they are, they can, you could listen to one and have a totally different experience yeah. than oh, great. another one. Yeah. I just got like, lucky. Some yeah, are yes. super unhinged. Some are like super professional. It yeah, just depends some, on, it depends I'm on so Jimmy's headspace. Yeah, some I'm so disinterested, I don't talk. And then I just confront the person. But that's interesting because um, you guys, you guys. Yeah. Run the real coaches summit, correct? Am I correct Aram does. Aram I do. does. Yeah. But you guys are so sick and tired of hearing, of hearing about fitness and nutrition. <laughs> yes. Well, I just, I, I just want, be, I just want coaches to be good coaches so that they don't fair, fuck their fair. clients over. Well, no, you, um, you want to learn the stuff and you want to know the stuff, but it's at the end of the day when it comes to these conversations, it's like the same. It's, thing. it's the same stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, yeah. I have a question, Alex. It, it, speaking of algorithms. Oh gosh. Thank you for permission to go for it. Um, <laughs> Are you going to ask her like a deep, deep, silence? A deep no. rooted math question? You said algorithms. No. You're going to be like, what is the Speaking cotangent of, of sign of four? Outside of fitness, what yeah. things show up on your algorithm? What things are you into? Books that you read, topics that you like to explore? Okay, so books that I read, it actually just recently expanded because I used to always read like self development and just fitness and nutrition books. And I got really burnt out by it because I was like, this is basically melting my brain. Cause it was all the same stuff. Like literally on my desk, I have a variety of the books that I read. I have like growth mindset workbook. And then I also have the new updated mindset. Cause I just think, I think psychology is interesting and I, but I like know most of the stuff in this already cause I've read all of it. So I started reading these. Which is, is a court. What does that say? It, it is fiction. This is Throne of Glass, and then this is A Court of Mist and Fury. I actually finished this whole series already, so 
It's a court of thorns and roses, which is basically fairy smut. <laughs> That is essentially. It's not this, like that fight. Is that is that the no, book give, series no, that is example. that the book series that Russ that Russ writes? No, this is Sarah J. Moss. Is her okay. name? Right, so give us. But she those, like yeah. she paint also us, wrote this book, this series too. Paint, the paint picture us of the fairy smut. Paint us a scene of what is, fairy. Smut. Yeah, what is fairy smut? Basically, it's like it's so like it anime does have like porn. a really. It's like anime porn. It's not. There are some like spicy scenes, but it's not like the whole thing is just like spicy. It's yeah, there's yeah. like a cute like love story and everything. So it's been really nice to get out of like the health and fitness and people have loved it. And it's funny because then I tie it into health and fitness and I'm like, oh, I, I walk while I read it or I <laughs> it's a good stress relief or something because it is like I think so often people think they only are allowed to read the things that they're interested in or helping them grow or helping them learn. And I was like it's really good for you to not always be worrying about trying to like develop as a human and to just chill yeah. out. Sometimes um, it's nice. It's a, yeah. Well, sometimes you just want to watch fairies fuck. Okay. They're not, well, she's they, they reading do. the book. They do she's in the not books. watching. She's envisioning. Yeah. See, that's she's envisioning. She's she envisioning. is creating a, a mind. That's movie. fair. She is. Creating that's a fair. Mind I, I mean, I have, I'm so, 40. I have no imagination left. It's gone. <laughs> you, this might this might be able to help you there you go it's gonna it will stimulate my realm. imagination can't wait no, this one, i can't this wait one for really a hobbit because porn. it's not this one's good because it's more like battles and things okay like That's it's like, like a game yeah. of thrones type of it's topic a, genre uh i'm trying to think of how i can gently say this because i don't want it to seem like i'm segmenting people into like more you can that's you exactly know. what this show is for. A lot of women don't love Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. I think it's great. I grew up watching them. I think that's a, that's a fair statement. Books. But I think a lot of women don't like love it. A lot of a, a lot of people yeah. that had that had that had sex in high school don't like Lord of the Rings either. So that's fine. I well. <laughs> three times I watched the first one three times. All three times I fell asleep within the first hour. I tried so um, fucking hard. I tried so hard to watch. You guys Lord don't of the Rings. like Lord of the Rings. I tried, I Alex. Can't. I tried so hard. Like okay, I, just skip I love the first TV. One. What do you mean? Skip the first one. The first one. Skip just the Fellowship of the don't Ring. Don't even. Don't even go, do that one. Yeah, go to Two Towers. Okay. Two Towers is more interesting. Return of the King. You could even just skip to the end and go to Return of the King. Return <laughs> of the King has some of the best battle and like fight scenes out there. Did you like Game of Thrones? Uh, some Jim brought it up. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I got, watch. I got I through. Do. I mean, I enjoy. Yeah. Like, I, I can't say that I was like oh. lit up for it. Mm. But then, but then again, like if you look at the show selection or movie selection that I like, it tends to be more like like he like Jim watched The Equalizer the other day. I can watch The Equalizer oh. series back to back to back seventeen times over, and I love it. I love Denzel Washington. I love The Sopranos. I love. Well, you like like old school stuff in that sense. Well, I'm forty. Like, I, old I like stuff I'm that 30. matters. I'm thirty. I'm not that much younger than y'all. I just look young. I get yeah, that a true. lot. We I'm don't. 45. Everyone thinks that I look like I'm twenty four. Super weathered here. Forty five. A, a lot of hard miles. <laughs> she's anyway, yeah, um, she's shocked. She's yeah. shocked right now. She's she um, left yeah. because she's so. <laughs> She dropped off um, the call because she's like, "My God, Jim is forty-five. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, uh, I'm, I'm getting a notification to ask Alex to close all apps and tabs or something like that. But anyway, you're back, so it's fine. Get here. Um, I lost. We lost your mic. Ah, oh, this is no good. It's okay. This is terrible. I wanted to find out the connect. Nope, no sound. Alex's recording will continue on a new track, hmm. starting a new recording for Alex due to a change in their device. I don't know what that means. This maybe get out of it. Yeah, Alex, maybe drop out of it and get back into it. Open it up again. Yeah, maybe exit, leave all, the room, okay. and come yeah. back. And this will all be part of the actual episode. Yeah, yeah we're going to keep it in. I wanted to hear the uh, explanation of... Of why we should like watch... Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, the book that she was reading. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That stuff just never... I wish I liked it because there's so much of it to enjoy. Yeah. You know, like it's it's endless hours of entertainment, but I don't know. I just while while we're know. waiting for her, um, so I posted that equalizer thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somebody points out that this is what was on the screen. Yeah, the cock, a, the sucking of the cock, right? Yeah, it's a picture of Denzel. It says 
<laughs> yeah, the but Russian who, the Russian pimp was saying that. I remember that line. Yeah, clearly. but whoever she is, I'm sure she must know how to suck the cock. Suck That's the cock. That's yeah. what was on the screen. Yeah. I had no idea. I just took the picture. I thought no you did idea. that inten- I thought you did that no, intentionally. Oh. Not at all. Not it was not intentional at all. I just took the picture and somebody was like, Do you even realize what's on the screen? I go, No. <laughs> It was ridiculous. I tried to rejoin three times, and I just kept getting like a ring of death. Yeah, what's up with Riverside? We've had a couple sucky experiences. I don't use Riverside because I've had the same issues. Like I've had it. I think it's because it's always uploading. Yeah, it like lags. What do you use now? I just use Zoom. Oh, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, But was what was the connection? The book you were reading, Ring of Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. The book you were reading, you were saying. I was talking about the oh, it's like the a genre. it's a more women's approachable book. Got it in that oh, same got genre. It. Got it. Okay, gotcha. Because it talks about like battles and fairies and things like that, but it's not as yeah. like there's also like yeah. women who are actually the front runners instead of just like a bunch of guys. Looks like Game of Thrones. There was like the women that were there were just shame. Nice. I don't. I don't you know, know that, that about scene. It. You were, really, oh, uh, that scene actually wasn't her body. Uh, she actually I've, had a, they I've had her, that. yeah. There's I've a scene that. where she's forced to walk naked through the streets and it's like a really long, it's a long, it's a so, un- so uncomfortable. And I think the whole, yeah. everybody's just like chanting, shame. Yeah. And then they throw stuff at her. Her feet are like bleeding, but the actress didn't uh, want to be naked. And so they CGI'd her head on someone else's body. Basically, how I feel after a, a long night of a bender. And I'm Sounds walking, like- and I'm walking from my car to the coffee shop, and it, I just hear that in the background. Shame. shame. I'm That's just like picturing like shame. Jesus being crucified and carrying his cross. As you that didn't describe. happen. That was that was fake news. Oh, okay, good. That's triggering. Um, to, triggering to Jews. So Alex, <laughs> Aram, I was like, like, did he not process what you said? Aram claims Jewishness as part of his heritage. <laughs> I'm half. I'm half. My mom's Jewish. He's half everything. Just so you know, um, not 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 Muslim or Buddhist or anything like that. I wish because I'd be a lot more enlightened. Yeah. I'm half Christian, half Jewish, half Protestant. It's not about you right now, Aram. Still finding himself. It's not, a, it's not yeah. about you, Aram. Um, about Alex, me. why do you throw up after most meals? Oh my God, he is brutal. Anyway, <laughs> what? Alex, ignore him. Ignore Sorry, him. I'm hot. I'm hot. What? Ha- ha- tell us about what got you into this space what is your passion with this space where are you at now in this space are you in a transition time are things changing with the way you're approaching stuff just give us a little bit of all did of you the, guys have uh, a talk while I, while I was off with my mic and say like we should probably ask her some like fitness questions? no we actually did not <laughs> i will tell you what what we did say though um oh, and then i'll re-ask that question so he referenced how i watched the equalizer the other day i posted a pic i just took a picture of the screen of the TV while I was yeah. watching it, somebody comments, "Do you know what was on the screen?" <laughs> and I go, "No, it was just a picture of Denzel Washington, and it had subtitles." The subtitles were, "But whoever she is, I'm sure she must know how to suck the cock." <laughs> and I had no idea that that was on there. Or Rob's like, "Oh, I figured you did on purpose." I'm like, "I didn't pause and rewind and take a picture. I just took the. Pi- I had no idea what the subtitles were. I just posted this is why it. attention to detail is very important. Yeah, Super and important. it was like small. And then I put my, you know, sarcastic a whole stuff about if you. I know you're old. It was probably hard yeah. hard to see it. It's fine. Ooh, yes, what? she's That's not anyway. wrong. Okay, so uh, <laughs> thanks. Final question. Final <laughs> question. Bye. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so tell tell us about. Uh, all of that, like what got you into this? What are you passionate about with it? Is there anything changing in your approach lately? What, what are you into? Yeah, so I got into fitness, it was like 10 years ago now, a little over 10 years ago. It was like when I was like 18. Um, and so basically my boyfriend had passed away from a drug overdose and I was had gained the freshman like 60 at that point. And I kind of turned to alcohol and food to basically like cope with it felt like crap every single day and I was miserable and I was really, really sick all the time. And eventually I just got to a point where I was tired of feeling like shit. And I was like, I need to do something, but I'm a broke college kid who has no idea what I'm doing. So I got a Groupon class and started just to do this like boot camp class. 
I bought a vegan book because I thought like being vegan is what made you healthy at the time. Sure. Um, and I've absolutely no shade to anyone who like wants to be vegan because they like want to help the animals and stuff. It's just, it's not what you have to do to be healthy. Um, do, you do you remind them how many animals are killed to grow their vegetables? I don't because it's not my place to tell somebody it's, else how they want to live their life. No, I, I, don't I can tell give them how my to live opinion their life. on things. I just remind them that there a lot more animals are murdered for them to eat their vegetables. Than... I am very thoughtful of how I pick my battles <laughs> because because I, 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 because I'm like, is that really going to benefit this human being yeah, to no, like do that? Probably not. He's no, like, no, I, I was we, making we, a joke. We pretend to be assholes. I don't I actually can, say that to their tell. face. <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah, so I, I started doing a Groupon class and I started basically like making all my food from home and got really into running. Cause also that's free. Uh, so I started doing half marathons and I did six in one year, lost a Jesus. ton of weight, got really, got really skinny. And then a lot of the boot camp instructors worked at the 24 hour fitness near where I lived. And they were like, Oh, well we do bodybuilding. And I was like, what's that? I was like, I want to look like you guys. You guys are like really fit. And they're like, yeah, we like do bikini competition, stuff like that. And I was like, okay. This was like 2013. So it was like the peak of it being very, very unhealthy because they, all they did was eat like tilapia. And I didn't realize that they like, they don't eat carbs. They eat tilapia. And so that's the people I started to like surround myself with. But then I met a bunch of firefighters at the gym that I went to, or like a lot of people who are going to school to become firefighters. And I was like, oh, that's what you do. You like go to school to become a firefighter. That's really cool. Yeah. So I went to school to become a firefighter. And being surrounded by all of them, I started eating more. I ended up gaining a lot of weight back because I stopped running as much, started lifting heavier. I actually started power lifting at the same time because I was like, I have to be stronger if I need to be able to like hang with these guys. And I was really fortunate where I lived in the Bay Area and Dan Green, who's like a power lifter, he or was like a world record holder power lifter. He had a gym near where I lived in Mountain View. So I actually like drove there and I was like, hey, could I have like a job here or something so I could actually like learn from the people here because I have no money. So like, is there some way I can like work for it? And I started to like learn from them. I uh, went through the fire academy and everything and then eventually just left that field because being a woman who's just very friendly with people and not in like a bad way, it was literally, I was told by instructors and different captains that I was too friendly and it would make people's like wives or girlfriends uncomfortable, even though I had a boyfriend at the time. And one of the battalion chiefs ended up making an inappropriate move and then there was no repercussions for it. So I left. Did you, Stayed were you fitness. actually, were you working as a firefighter at that point? I was a cadet with one of them. Okay. So I was like so, doing an internship. Okay. So lesson, less if a woman is nice to you. It does not she, mean they she like She clearly you. wants to sleep. Doesn't mean they want to fuck. She clearly yeah. wants to sleep with you. That is insane to me. Talk about a complete <laughs> lack of like responsibility for men. That it they're was, like, you're you're gonna have to leave because these guys They can't they, control themselves. It's it like was, insane. What's weird is if I was at a different station, I 100% would have stayed with it because it happened okay. to be that the station I was with, because that's just how this is going to probably sound really it's strange, but a woman, no, a woman who a lot of people compared me to had gone through the academy, had, I, I worked at Lululemon. She had worked at the exact same Lululemon that I worked at. And then she happened to like date one of her coworkers when she was there. And meanwhile, I'm like, but I'm not this girl why are you comparing me? So they had this preconceived like notion already about me. Mm. But then when I told one of the battalion chiefs at a different location, he was actually one of my instructors during the fire Academy. I told him what had happened and he was like, come on over to us. Like, we're not going to fly with that. And I was like, honestly, I already have like a really bad taste in my mouth from this. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want this to be my career. So yeah. I just, I left and kind of went through a weird transition in my life where I was like still personal training, trying to figure out what I wanted. Eventually moved to LA and started doing like stunts, acting and modeling. Then stunts? the world shut down. Wow, yeah. That's, cool. that's yeah, awesome. It was, it was really fun. It was really cool. And it was like, it was really fun to be able to do something physical, but then I love acting. Like that was what I was going to school for before I then like went to firefighting oh, okay. and kinesiology. And I just got <laughs> the irony of like all of this. I got made fun of a lot when I was really, really young for theater. And so that's why like I stopped doing it. It's in college I was like, yeah. it is, you but know, I mean, fucking nerd. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> 
talking about like Lord of the Rings and stuff and it's like, you nerd. But it 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 is everything that I've done has eventually gotten me to where I am yes. now because I am a lot more mentally resilient. I yeah. don't like bullies because I was bullied and that turned me into like a really sad kid. But I also have like a lot of trauma. And so I make like really mean jokes to people sometimes and I have dark sense of humor. So it's fine. Yeah. But then yeah, like the a, acting makes me enjoy so making key. content. Yeah, I think that's so key for people to realize and clients and everything like that. What you just said, everything that has happened to you was necessary mm -hmm. for you to be where you are. Yeah. And I, I think that a lot of like one of the things I try to be really conscious about in like my coaching and how I present myself online is I don't want people to view themselves as a victim yeah. because everyone has their own story of what's happened and you have no idea what someone else has gone through. Yeah. Like you guys were kind of joking about the fact that I'm like a very positive person. And a lot of people will be like, how are you always so happy? How are you always so positive? I'm like, I'm not always that way, but also even when shit goes wrong now, it doesn't bother me that much because I've just gotten better at how I handle these challenges. It doesn't mean the challenges like aren't important. They don't hurt me. They don't have their impact, but I'm just better at how I deal with it. Yeah. And that's just, and that's, that's what the, clients need to know. Yeah. And, the, and for people <clears throat> to kind of maybe understand a connection between physical and mental health kind of thing, somebody in good physical health, they can get their heart rate up mm -hmm. and the quicker it comes down, that shows the level of fitness that they have. You know, mm -hmm. your, your heart rate's elevated, you can bring it back down fairly quickly. That shows your level of fitness. And it's the same thing with mental health. You get elevated yeah. mentally, you're freaking out, you're upset, but you can bring yourself back down and stabilize. That's a sign of, of good mental health. So yeah, you're not like that all the time, but you recognize, hey, this is just a feeling that I'm feeling right now. It's going to pass and I can, you know, wait it out, move through it. Yeah. And also I talk a lot about how a lot of people's stress management techniques are actually making their stress worse. <laughs> Give an example. Uh, like a lot of people, I know we were joking about like the walk of shame after a bender or something, but a lot of people will turn to like alcohol or food or like one of my favorite examples is even how, especially for women, if you go through like a breakup or something traumatic happens, it's always the woman's crying in bed. She's eating her chocolate. Like that's what you picture because of what like society is kind of deemed as like all women do. And now we have like the whole like revenge body idea. And I'm like, how about instead of even in the first place, leaning into bed and going, crying and getting your chocolate and stuff, yes, feel your feels. Like, I think it is so important to recognize that you have feelings, give yourself space to feel them. If you want to have a little chocolate, go have a little chocolate, sure. but get outside, like yeah. go reach out to your, it's always the girl is secluding herself and not reaching out to her friends. Go ask for help. Like, it's okay. Go tell people something's wrong and say that you just want help. And then similarly, like going to the gym, like a lot of people go there and say like, the gym is my therapy. Don't go there to punish yourself. It, 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 that's something that makes me like viscerally angry because people will like get upset with me when I'm like, well, the gym isn't therapy. They're like pain in gym, make heart pain go away. And I'm like, actually oh, it doesn't. Talk. <laughs> it's, talk. It's, 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 it's the same fucking thing as eating a pint of ice cream to relieve your stress yeah. or the same thing as drinking a bottle of Jack to relieve your stress. You're just finding what seems to be a healthier mechanism, but it doesn't, it then turns into an unhealthy mechanism. And then your mm -hmm. relationship with it becomes tied to the fact that you're masking something as opposed to actually facing it. Well, and there's a huge lack of emotional intelligence just in America as a whole. And a lot of people Truth. have never been taught how to deal with their shit. And that's not their fault. We, we, are products of whatever our socioeconomic standings have been and like whatever we were subject to in our lives. Like our and daddies. That, yeah, that, our teachers, anyone who we looked up to. Like I'm, I, I love Cobra Kai. I don't know if you guys have watched that show. Yes. But yeah, but like John Kreese, like think about the way that they do the whole parallel between Johnny Lawrence and who actually is the true karate kid, in my opinion, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> just have to throw that out there. But there's like the way that they were raised is like he came from this really, really rich family and had everything. But then he had a, honestly a poor role, role model, which ended up leading him down this path. Meanwhile, like Mr. Miyagi, like helped the other kid who I can never remember his name for any reason. Oh, uh, uh Russo. Da yeah, Daniel LaRusso. Yeah, Daniel LaRusso. And so it's like they, they, and then they ended up in such different products of life.
But how it, annoying is Danny Russo in Cobra Kai? What a fucking brat! I, you we know, don't have to stay on that topic. He no, just, <laughs> I don't hate him, but like, I, I get annoyed that Johnny is truly like trying to change, and you can see yes. it. Yes, honestly. So this is my calm. Just pretentious even, with his soft little frail old man body, and he's kicking ass. Like nobody is convinced that Daniel LaRusso, the car dealer with his frail antique body, is kicking ass. I believe it. I mean, we saw Mr. Miyagi do it. Come on, look at Mr. Steven Miyagi Seagal. Was a real man. Yeah, but and and, to, and, and and Asians just age better than we do. That's oh, just that's, that's that, just no, a, that's facts. That's a fact. Yeah. They, 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 they're one hundred and forty <laughs> years old on average. Usually. <laughs> now we've lost that. Usually. <laughs> no, that's, 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 you can look that up on PubMed. Yeah. 140? 140. 140. 87% of statistics are made up. So just keep that in mind. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'll find a PubMed like article for you. I'll shoot, I'll shoot it over to you. Yeah. I'll, I'll find the PubMed like, article. Yeah. But in that show, my biggest pet peeve, and also in the pet peeves, even in the books that I was reading, communication would have solved everyone's problems. Every single person's problems. But you know what they do instead? They just throw their fists around and break each other's arms, and it's nuts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tying that into like the fitness stuff, it's like a lot of people will say actually that's the same example. A lot of people will turn to like karate or something else physical because they don't want to just deal with having an uncomfortable conversation and potentially being told that they were wrong, that like they have stuff that they need to work on. And just working through it and moving forward. Like it's called heartbreak or like for a reason. Our heart literally, it feels broken. But then people are so scared. I have friends who have legitimately like we've been having deep conversations because I'm the person who will like challenge people. And they will leave because they're like, I just can't deal with this right now. And I'm like, okay, like that's, I don't want to force you to do anything. Like that's not my place. But they'll be so overwhelmed and scared. Yeah. To just acknowledge how they're feeling. Like they could be going through a breakup. And I'm like, oh, well, like, how are you doing? And they're like, I don't even want to talk about it. And I'm like, okay. And like, yes, yeah, so you don't have to talk about everything all the time, every single moment. But you have to work through it eventually. Through it. That's the important part. Is yeah. It. Not around it. Not underneath no. it. Not over the top of it, but through it. And I think that's the biggest problem that I'm seeing is as I work. And I work with mostly women, but mm -hmm. there's just, there's. There's just not a ton of healthy, productive. I don't even want to say it. Let's, let's throw the word healthy out for a second. Let's just talk about productive coping mm -hmm. mechanisms. Something that's actually going to move you forward from where you are today as opposed to like either keeping you in the same spot or making things worse, which in a lot of cases it does become that because people don't want to look at that mirror because that mirror can get a little ugly. And having those conversations is tough because people tend to be ple people pleasers and they don't want to be confrontational. And God forbid we have one of those hard conversations, which 99 out of 100 times, once you get through that hard conversation, it's like, whew, you just exhale and you're like, wow, that was fucking not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And wow, lo and behold, I feel better. Yeah. I just had that conversation with my friend the other day because she was like super anxious. And I told her, I was like, I used to be the exact same way. 100%. I used to be a big ball of anxiety. And you know what I realized? I focus so much on all the shit I can't control. Mm -hmm. And the was moment like, I started to realize that I can't control most stuff, I was significantly happier. Sorry, Was go that for, for you just like a moment that you feel like happened? Or was there things that you were attempting to practice that revealed that? Yeah, and that's a great question. I actually... It took a lot. It definitely was not a single moment that just like changed my life. And it never is. Like, I think that a lot of times people love to think that, but it was a combination of a lot of things. It was like journaling, going to therapy, asking myself the tough questions and like giving my space, myself space to feel them. It was also like, again, instead of viewing the gym as like a punishment, I go in and I view it as almost like a meditation. And I think that's one of the most interesting things. I actually recently just had Eric Helms on my podcast, and it was so interesting to talk to him about how he's basically started to turn the way that he trains into like a meditation. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I do. And I try and tell a lot of clients to do because you don't start dreading it. But it was like a combination of things. I actually made a journal. I think 
right there. I actually made a journal for that exact same reason to help people like work through things and make it a little bit more engaging and intentional for them to like have a space that's actually guided through reflective questions that can help them like move forward. It's not intended to like replace therapy or anything, but yeah. one of my friends is a therapist and she also talks about the fact that there's a lot of therapists who aren't being as action oriented and will kind of just sit and listen and it's, and it's really hard and, and validate that's the word yeah part. yeah it's really hard to find a great therapist because it's and that's not saying all therapists are bad it's just like saying not all coaches are bad not all groups of anybody are bad you can't just say that but it's like it's it's hard to find a good one and so i'd rather point people in the direction of even like the workbook that i held up earlier of like the growth mindset one like I would rather have resources that I've personally worked through. And I'm like, hey, here you go, people, clients, everyone. Like, I don't gatekeep anything. I put everything online. I'm like, I hope you guys can work through your shit and become a better person because all that does is make the world a better place. And by the time they get to you for actual nutrition and fitness coaching, they're a lot more receptive of it because it's they, they've dealt with the gray matter bullshit between their ears that's holding them back and their identity issues and their stress coping mm -hmm. mechanism problems. Like that's really what it comes down to. That's why we're so bored talking about calories, macros, sets, and reps because that shit's actually really simple. I don't mm -hmm. want to say it's easy because it's never easy to execute it consistently over the course of a, a lifetime, but it's not hard. It's not like complicated. It's not like, oh, mm -hmm. what do I like? like it's very simple. Eat fucking it's a psychology real food around it. Yeah, I mean, over and over again and train hard over and over again and go to sleep and drink your water. And yeah, take everybody knows. I'm just, I'm really leaning into the, the, the fact that everybody knows the answers. That all the answers are inside of us. Mm -hmm. And I'm even getting away from the identity of coach or teacher or guide or whatever. And <clears throat> just kind of considering my role being, Sherpa. I'm trying to pull out a Sherpa. I'm trying to pull out of you what's already inside. Mm -hmm. Like, you know the answers. You know, I mean, it's like you go to a restaurant. Oh, what should, what should I get? You know what the best yeah. thing to get is. Oh, what should I do? You know, you I've should always, you can we know talk about that, can, we, can we talk about that for a second? Because I think it's always so funny when people send me a picture of a menu and it's like <laughs> fried food, fried food, fried food, fried food, sauteed food, grilled food. And they're like, which one should I take? I'm like, the apple really? pie a la mode. Really? Really? They it says, that, un it's, it's like it's, onion rings, burger and fries, fried calamari. And then it's salmon like. Salmon and asparagus. Right. And then it's like <laughs> sea bass grilled with, with sauteed vegetables. And I'm like, you're you're still having a problem conceptualizing this? Do I have to spell it out for you? They're like, well, it, it's I know, but that, I don't really. Okay, fine. Just get the fucking burger and fries. I don't really give a shit. You're at a restaurant. Just enjoy it and then get it's, back to work if, if any anybody listening right now, do not hire a Rob. Um, <laughs> you're you're, get, you're gonna get you're do gonna get shamed into not eating properly. Hire a Rob. Um, I I know that's not his response. Any normal human, self-respecting coach would say, well, "What do you think you should get?" And then they would pick it. Because no one's going to be like the fucking deep fried wings and side of fries. That's what yeah. I think I should get for my yeah. goals. But people just, know just, people just, know what they should be doing. They know that they should be lifting. They know that they should be walking. They know that they should be drinking water. They know that they should be eating healthier. But there's all that other shit that's going mm -hmm. on in the brain that's getting in the way. And mm -hmm. they think that the body is going to make them feel confident. They think all these other things. So it's like they're trying to will themselves into joy mm -hmm. or happiness like if i could just shut down the part of me that wants to drink if i could just shut down the part of me that wants to eat the chips and emotionally eat and all that kind of stuff it's uh that's where the battle is because we've all seen it where somebody might be really disciplined for a period of time drop a bunch of weight and like i got there finally i'm done and then mm -hmm. they they go right back to where they were or they get there and it's not good enough you know with mm -hmm. body dysmorphia and different issues like that but to to get into yeah, like trying to figure out like who you really are, what really are your values, what do you really want? Mm -hmm. You know, me and Rob have talked about before. Of people say they say they want the body, but they want the social life. They want the the mm -hmm. the, the restaurants, the friends, the drinks, and all that. It's like, well, what do you really want? Yeah. If you want the social life, like go enjoy the social life. Don't complain about not having a perfect body. Like, what do you actually really want? Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree that I don't think enough people ask themselves, like, what do they really want or what do they value? 
And similarly, I think a lot of people idolize a specific physique, but then they also don't have clear expectations of what it would take to get there and maintain it. They don't know what that person's doing. Yes. Yeah. And that's why like, I always, I always say the phrase, you'll never hate yourself into a body that you love. Mm -hmm. So you need to figure out like, what do you actually love and what do you want? I also think a lot of people think that like, you can't socialize, you can't go out to eat, you can't do these things when you are trying to lose weight or you're trying to change your body or change your lifestyle. You can do all of that stuff. It just may look different or you may need to make more compromises. Like I know we were kind of talking about like if someone was to go out to dinner and then you were like, well, if it was just like, if you're at the restaurant, like go enjoy yourself. And it's like, I have clients who they go out like maybe once a week and I'm like, cool, like enjoy yourself when you do that. I have other clients who go out, like they go out to eat for almost every lunch during the week. Like professionally. Yeah. And like, that's their thing. And then I'm like, cool, we have to make compromises because like, we can't just say like every meal's a YOLO meal now because it's it's not, (laughs) it's, it's not this magical one-time thing. It's a recurring event. So we're going to, and it's probably comped by your work. So also like you can get something nicer and it's fine. Um, but like, I I think a lot of people also just need almost like the validation or like the approval from yeah, somebody it's, else. It, I think it's the approval piece. I think that especially because I think you probably work with a lot of women and with me, it's, it's very odd how it, women really do seek that approval. Like it, it's men very, do like, too. Yeah, so I, do I don't, too, I don't, I don't like, work with enough yeah. of them to get that, to get that data set. But with women, it really, is, it really is to, I, I get a lot of questions of is like, is this okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I find that to be such an unfortunate question. Because it's like, how many years have you been asking this question to yourself and you've never given yourself that permission? And now you come to me and I give you that permission. And all of a sudden it's okay. And you have a totally healthy relationship with it. You don't overindulge it. You don't overdo it. You've mm-hmm. just been waiting for that, that approval for so long. And that's, it's just, it's sad to me. It sucks. Well, it's sad because that is something trained that carries over to a lot of aspects of women's lives. Mm -hmm. Because like, we'll constantly be asking like, oh, is it okay if I do this? Is it okay if I do that? And like, and that's men and women, to be fair. Like what you were saying, Jim, is like, it is every, men and women do that because even in school, like we're like, is it okay if I go to the bathroom? Is it okay if I ask a question? Is it okay if I do this thing? We are literally trained from a young age to be asking for permission to do things all the time. And when we're like thrown out into the real world, we're still asking permission. Oh, am I allowed to do this project? Am I allowed to like pursue this goal? Am I allowed to do these things? And not enough people, like I always joke that I'm like the tinfoil hat person because I'm like, (laughs) you need to question what society has told you because like, like a really mundane example is basically like I say, any food can be a breakfast food if you eat it at breakfast time. (laughs) People get so upset, so so upset when I say that. And I'm like, why am I wrong? Yeah. Like if you have leftover pizza and you have it cold for breakfast, then suddenly you're fine with it being breakfast food. But when I'm like, you know, I want chicken tacos for breakfast and I'm going to make them myself right now. People lose. Their, they're like, there's no eggs in that. And I'm like, eggs aren't suddenly <laughs> breakfast. Yeah. So that's well, my- if you smoke your salmon, it's a breakfast salmon. But if you grill yeah. your salmon, it's a dinner salmon. And I'm like, you, I'm team yeah. savory all day, baby. I don't want like sweets for breakfast. I don't want pancakes or anything. So I'm like, yeah. I will take a nice salmon and asparagus some mornings eaten, for breakfast. I've eaten cold salmon for breakfast. Right okay, now. I, I wouldn't to, eat it cold. I actually love cold You don't cold have to fish. judge me. I well, love Well, is it like sashimi? No, like no, I just like, like, a I love piece like a of salmon just same. cold out of the fridge. Same. Well, I, mean, the I can't same even way. judge you because I'd for sure just smash some sh- smash some sushi. Wow, that was a mouthful. Smash yeah. some sushi. It's a lot. Say that smash some sushi. Uh, I but I, sushi, I think it's a sushi, I think it comes sushi, it comes down sushi. to like a shut up Rob I'm doing the smash <laughs> right, just like well, texturally when you grill fish or you saute fish and then you cool it it hardens up a little bit when you eat it cold so I, I think I just prefer mm-hmm. that that harder texture that's just you like you like to eat the way that your that's heart feels said. hard right? and cold hard yes. and cold oh that's yeah. just I just heard him say cold. I like that hardened texture and I was like that's what she said that's yeah. what she said no, I that's I'm 40. I have problems in that department. So, just to get it up is an accomplishment. <laughs> it's, an it's, a, it's an achievement. It's an achievement. I, so yeah. I apologize. That's I why when the doctor it. says achieve an erection, it really does <laughs> yeah. feel wow. that way. Yeah, it feels that way. Women go through menopause. Men can't get aroused. It's fine. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why we're all fucked when we hit 45. We might as well just die. That's it. It's over. 
Mail it in. A- I, I I prefer back in the days of like the Lord of the Rings era, if, which I think is a real t- real time period, when people just died at thirty <laughs> and they just accomplished so much at a very young age. They had like seventy four kids before they were twenty five, and then it just they just died of some horrible black plague, and that was it. But you lived. I, you really, you really, you really gave it your all for those thirty I years. I love how sad you felt for adult people struggling and needing permission to eat a meal at a restaurant. You're just like it's just sad, and then you follow it up with, "I wish we all just died at 30. Yeah. You know, it's like like you like this empathy for people, this two emotion things, behind I, it, and then you're two like, things, you know what I really miss? He's when like, people two just can died at, at thirty. Yeah, two, two things, things can, can be true. That's it. Exactly. It's true. It's true. I could be super empathetic and extremely pessimistic at the same time. Yeah, it's called empathetic pessimism. Look it up. First of all, it's not necessarily like pessimistic positivity. to die at thirty. <laughs> toxic, toxic positivity. Toxic positivity <laughs> is real. It is. It's yeah, almost exactly. as it's almost as fun as toxic masculinity. That's the other fun one. No, but talk- or I mansplaining. Know about that. Manspl- we mansplain. I mansplain a ton on this show. So much mansplaining. How do you have any women clients? Um. <laughs> He's like, that's a good. I don't question. know. That's a good question. I haven't figured that out yet. But I. He I just... finds he finds the damaged. Yeah, the most broken. The, bo- the most yeah. broken. That's a, yeah, that's always ones... been my demographic. That's a, that's yeah. who I've always dated. That's who I help. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, like, I just I, I find I... I find the way to manipulate and convince. So you're yeah. Paul unreason- Saladino. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, wow. damn. Wow. No, I'm Strike that you for the got... record. Don't no, no. Don't. We want to be honest. Hey, this is a vulnerable, I don't want to be illegal. Honest I might be show. In legal trouble. We're, no, uh, fuck Paul Saladino. Each like episode, that? we're trying. You think to... Paul Saladino is going to listen to this show? Come on. <laughs> Eight. There's nine listeners. Two of them are, are his parents. We one, are... one of them is a former client of mine, and that's about it. So we're good. We're about to hit 100,000 downloads. That's pretty good for it. Is that a lot? For us, I mean, That's we don't. Ha- we didn't I don't have- even know what that means. We didn't have that many before it, so it's good for us. True. So it's a hundred thousand more than we had. <laughs> You're just getting started. a little bit better. I mean, yeah. Alex Fry has a podcast that gets fifty to a hundred thousand per episode. We- does she? Do you? No, it's closer to like twenty to thirty per episode. Twenty to thirty thousand. Thousand downloads. Yes. Meaning people are actually taking up room on their phone. No, it's to all the store same thing, your dude. podcast. If somebody, no, play- if somebody hits like play. A if somebody hits play, it counts as a download. Yeah, I think that's just oh, a listen. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. I, don't know, I, I don't know any of these metrics. Yeah, I think that's yeah. just a listen. Interesting. Yeah, she's okay. 20 to 30,000 an episode. Where per episode. Wow. A little under 1,000. So you're 20 times cooler than we are. I mean, yeah, but we knew that already, so it's fine. Okay. No, that's not actually true. <laughs> that's not actually true. Because, um, like, Kim Kardashian, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is she cooler than us? Probably not. No. She didn't I mean, I don't she know. Just, she did great at the roast, so she's, I'm she's, like, she's, she kind of seems like she's, she's not like the, 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 the reality is she's not cool with us. All right, um, I would party with has, her. Though. She just, ha- I would not. I would not want to ever hang out. Just with once, her, just, I would just once want to party with her, just see what it's like. That's fine. Nobody I cares. don't drink, so I'm um, just gonna... yeah. Do you do well, mushrooms or weed or I anything? Don't do anything? No, nothing. Just food. We'll send you mushrooms. Food's your only drug. Food's your only drug. It's, I don't even use it as a drug. I have a very healthy relationship with caffeine. Food now. No, I don't abuse it. Do you Just use my caffeine? friends. Just I, yeah, I have a cup of coffee every morning. Just meth. Okay, so I don't you do drink drugs. energy drinks. So you do drugs. You do caffeine. Yeah, That's a drug. My friends like take a lot of pride, or maybe are weirded out by the fact that they're like, "You're actually healthy." And I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and they're like, you actually like walk, go on walks every single day and you like eat well, you have a good relationship <laughs> with these things. Like, and, but that's what's what, all my friends are fitness coaches. It's the okay. irony of the that's fact that like ask. most fitness coaches are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like, go for a walk. You have to walk. And then they're not. Yeah. She's, or they like yeah. don't sleep. And I'm like, yeah, that, yeah. Go that's... to bed. They got to scroll, scroll through their insecurities at night. That's true. Find I just read demons. my fairy smut, so it's fine. Fairy you, you've smut. Been, you've essentially just power washed your entire soul. That's so is that just, because of my fairy just, smut? 
I'm no, they're just you're just you're just such a wholesome individual. It's it's oh. it's refreshing. It's refreshing, and I, and I well, it, it took me a while to get here because, and that's the thing I think a lot of people forget too is like I haven't always been the person I am now. I was a pretty sure. shitty person in high school. I had a lot of issues in my like early twenties. I stopped drinking. When Can I we talk about issue. some of that stuff? Because I feel like that's that's, that's gonna fine. be fine. Yeah. We get into some like the, the, that's her old self though. Can we talk about some of the, well, the butterf- the butterfly transformation that we see? Well, like I said, I was I was bullied a lot really, really early, like elementary school. And then through elementary and middle school, I like just I really struggled to have friends. I felt like no one liked me. And then I eventually turned into somebody who was like really angry and just like very catty. I viewed like other women as my competition. I would always like talk down about other women or like always want to be in drama. And I just like, that's why I was like in high school. And I always like sought out like male's attention thinking that's going to make me feel better about myself or it's going to make me more like validated as like a human being. And then even after like my boyfriend passed away, it was like, I basically kept doing the same thing where I was like, I need validation from other people. And I kept trying, find, like, trying to find ways to do that. But it's kind of similar to what you're saying about how two things can exist is like, I would do that. But then I also just knew I wanted to help people. Like I was okay. like, I was very broken. And I just want to help people somehow. And that's why I eventually got into like firefighting and then like doing all of these other things. But it was also at the same time that I realized my constant desire to try to help other people was basically like me not dealing with my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, you have stuff you need to fix <laughs> and like yeah. work through. And so I started to do that. And it's a big reason why like now a lot of the content that I post is really focused about like normalizing very normal things on women and also men. And like, I actually do have a lot of men who follow me who say like, you actually make me feel a lot better about having like a small belly or not being like shredded all the time. And I'm like, good. Like you shouldn't be embarrassed about that stuff. It's like, you're a human being who's just enjoying your life. Like Instagram has painted this picture of everyone being like muscle mommies and all this stuff. And I'm like, that is the 1%. (laughs) Yeah, like yeah. It's a, it's let there are extent. more millionaires in the world than there are people with six packs but we yeah, just see probably, all them all the time really true. yeah yeah i've it's, heard that a million times so i'm gonna believe that's actually no it's it's way easier to make more <laughs> it's way easier to make money than it is to get shredded way easier yeah and so that's why like i just i realized i had a lot of stuff i had to work through and eventually it's kind of similar to the stuff we were already talking about where it's like i finally realized i had to take accountability for like how i felt But also, weirdly enough, as I've worked through a lot of things, yes, there are definitely people I've hurt and there's definitely mistakes that I've made. But even talking to friends who had like known me through those times, they're like, you weren't that bad of a person. And I hated myself. And it didn't come from a place of malice. Yeah, they saw you through the way that you were acting. And it just took a matter of time, therapy, journaling for you to see you. It seems like if, if you you were viewing yourself as really bad and they're like, you weren't that bad. Like they were seeing probably more truly who you are. They saw your heart even they were if you seeing, were acting in yeah. a certain way. You weren't able to see your heart. Now through doing work with therapy, journaling, things like that, you're able to see your heart, see who you are kind mm-hmm. of a thing is what I'm gathering from what you said. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm I, a I guru. Think it's whatever. <laughs> you just enlightened my whole life. Yeah. Uh, but that's where it's really important to surround yourself with people who do truly want the best for you. Because like at that time I was drinking a bunch and like, like I said, my boyfriend passed away from a drug overdose. It wasn't yeah, like, rough. And, and that's where it's, I, I personally haven't done drugs and I didn't do the stuff that he had done, but it was like, those were still the people I hung out with after it happened. Yeah. yeah. Like those were the people that I would like continue to drink with, continue to like turn to food with. And like, validate the behaviors that I was doing that were ultimately making me more and more miserable as a human being and more depressed. And it wasn't until I realized that like those weren't things I wanted to do that I started to like kind of isolate myself a little bit. And you don't have to do that. Like you don't have to cut people out of your lives, but it made it a lot easier to not do that. Eventually I was like still having friends who like drank and stuff, but it was like different it was like a different type of partying. And then eventually I was like, I feel like absolute crap when I drink. So it's just not fun for me. I think it's important. I think it's, this is something I've been really thinking about lately. Cause I think people it's, I, I got into a conversation with a, a buddy recently. He was like, I'm just done with drinking. I just would rather be 
thinking about things, expanding my mind, being enlightened, whatever. He's like, I just want to smoke some weed, be alone. He, he has his own gym. And he's, he's just like, I don't relate to these people anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, absolutely. Like yeah. same page. Like, I don't want to uh, shut down. I want to like expand. Yeah. And so we we're just having this, this conversation and he's like, it's, you know, they're saying you're different and I'm losing friends mm -hmm. because of this, but I'm okay with it. And mm -hmm. I think some people hold on to things and it's, I feel like life is just this series of, of, of being filtered out. You know, mm -hmm. like nobody's complaining about the coffee grinds being stuck in the filter, but we're complaining about friends we lose, mm -hmm. you know? So all these things, it's just, these situations are filters to get rid of the things in our life that we don't need so that mm -hmm. we can get through this filter to like ascend to our highest self. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it, it could be, it could be yeah. a way to just kind of be okay. Letting things go just because somebody was a friend for a while. It's okay. Yeah. Well, you, things, you filter you people out. You're going to outgrow people, I think, throughout mm -hmm. a lifetime of some pursuit of self development. But I also think it just comes down to intention. Like, I don't give a shit what you do, whether it's cookies or cocaine or fucking heroin. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Or, or, or the absolute like, last thing <laughs> I was expecting anybody what? to say. You're like, yeah. I don't care what you do. I thought you were going to say like an activity, and then you're like, cookies. <laughs> Or cocaine. What the fuck was they that? Had, they had, it just rolled, oh it, 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 it was a good alliteration that just rolled off the tongue. Cook, I don't care what you do, man. Cookies or cocaine. Like yeah. eating Those cookies, like emotion, yeah, like, like they, emotional they, eating they, cookies they, or weed cookies. That, see, that's what they, I was wondering. I was like, they may about? very well seem like different things, but it, but some people, no, it's because, different. Yeah. No, I get because they, so because they, la because they lack intention, they don't understand yeah. the usage of whatever they're doing. That's they don't fair. understand the purpose of whatever they're doing. So again, I've at 40, the way that I interact with drugs or food or whatever is a lot more intentional than it was when mm -hmm. I was 28, when I was like you hiding shit or trying to not feel stuff. That's why I was doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I still like to do all that same shit. I just have a different intention for it now. And I don't Describe need the, your intention. I don't need the frequency of it that I needed in my twenties because I was hiding from my problems the mm. same way you were. And until I actually checked in with myself and did the therapy and did the journaling and did the silence treatment to myself and sat on the couch by myself and leaned into my discomfort. I just think that a lot of times people now in their forties, in their fifties, when they're coming to us and they need help with their nutrition or they need help with their fitness, whatever. It's because they've been so disconnected from how they feel for 15, 20 years plus that it's almost become a habit to not feel anything. And mm -hmm. if they do feel something, it's such a rush of a feeling that it's overwhelming. And yeah. that's where the anxiety comes from. Would, where, mm -hmm. Whereas I think you built the skill set of being able to take all those very strong feelings and being able to actually know how to diminish them to a, a, a softer sound that wasn't this ringing in your ear that bothered you and disrupted mm -hmm. your entire pattern of life. And I wish more folks can really spend some time with however much time they have left to understand that just because you have this pattern of eating or drinking or doing whatever for 20, 30 years, that it doesn't mean that you can, you have to continue that pattern. You can very mm -hmm. much disrupt that pattern and recreate yourself to spend the balance of your life doing something better. Mm -hmm. Would either one of you do a dark room? Like, a like sit in a dark room? Deprivation. Like no, no, no. Uh, like, like, like the dinner, <laughs> like the float, like no. the float tanks, like the float tanks that they but have. I've done that. Can, I've done yeah. the float tank. I'm talking like the dark room where you are in like a cave, dark room, deprived of oh, sound, I've heard of this. deprived of light, deprived of anything. But you I'm do it for an extended period of time. But it's for yeah, like how, days, how, like three oh, days, days. See, five I wouldn't days. do days. I would go no. crazy. No, not days. I'd go crazy point. after a couple days. I. I don't that's how they. Friendly. That's how the fucking Soviets torture people, Jimmy. That's. I was going like to say a, that's literally torture. There's like there's a reason there's like no, isolation rooms in jail. No, but if, <laughs> it, no <laughs> seriously. It's called lockdown. Yeah, but if you're <laughs> if you're choosing it, it's different. true intention. I get it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like right. like a rom, like a rom. You the attention. <laughs> yeah, like a rom. A rom doesn't want to be like he doesn't want somebody to just come assault him with a stick, but he does want to be spanked. So it's right. different. Intention. Um, it's yeah. intention. Intention is everything. Like, would, don't, would like, I yeah. would, would you probably do, an hour? do it for like an hour. I was going to say, I'd probably do it for an hour. Yeah. Start it off with an hour. I'm I don't so think, it, my thing is, I just wouldn't want to do it for three days. That's, 
It feels so like a waste of my time. Respectfully. Yeah. What if it, <laughs> that's what, what it is. It's, no, literally, what like, if that's you what found, I feel what like if in you, my brain. What the fuck are you gonna? But what are you gonna find? What are you gonna find? I don't know. I mean, you're sitting with your thoughts. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I sit with my thoughts all the time. Yeah, I was gonna I'm say. Watch Card- I'm willing to think about my things. Go watch yeah, Kardashians. Let me let me let me ask you this. Like, I, I think at some point this this pursuit of self development and this pursuit of a higher frequency no, of living. Or it's whatever. just exp- it's just like trying shit out, man. Just, it's fucking just, around. Just to find an out. hour. An hour is trying. Right. An hour Three is fucking around to find out. Three is days like- is a problem. Three days is like get yeah. your shit together. <laughs> Three days is a problem. Like. Three days is like they're called, there's an APB out on you. I don't know. I just, I don't want to fucking, like, I like people and I like, I don't like silence that much. I like silence enough in dribs and drabs to where it'll Dude, be you're, pleasurable. You're, you're, you've lived so many days. You and? could do three in silence. You're like, I like people. We don't have like, like unlimited people. days. I know. It's like, I'm 40, dude. Like, the fucking clock's running out, man. For you, you it act is. like yeah, 40 the way you, is so old. He it's is, halftime. He's, he's it's halftime, at no, least. No, it's not. What do you it's mean, half time. Alex. The Maybe average male in the, in the United States dies at like eighty six or eighty five years old. I'm basically so at half time. Tech- okay. Listen, so I'm basically at half time. He's struggling. He's struggling with it. He likes midlife crisis. It's fine. Yeah, he's struggling. I, no, I, I, it's not. I'm I, forty five. I'm fucking I love being loving 40. it. I'm yeah, loving it. Yeah, because you're doing your little trips and trying to get a higher power and everything. I. Right. I don't. I, do I haven't. Like- yeah, I haven't seen Mickey Mouse talk to me at night <laughs> like you have. That's an unfortunate I do thing. think that that can go too far, though. Like, I do think that people can go That's too far with, like, That's self-development. That's what yeah, I was I think getting were, at. Yeah. yeah. I think it can go too far. Because I think it's the same thing as, like, uh, like nutrition and stuff. Some people, they go so deep into it. And that's almost what leads them past the point of benefit. They, and then, yeah. like, to be fair, a lot of these, like, uh, like holistic people, like, who are trying to biohack everything. They're sharp. They're getting... But they're, they're getting so deep into it. And I, I don't yeah. think that necessarily they're doing it just for money. I truly believe that some of them are just so interested in trying to like yeah. optimize their body to the absolute best yeah. that it could ever possibly be that they're just going so deep in this hole that they're just yeah. making themselves crazy. Well, it's weird because you're doing that, but you're not enjoying life. They th- But a lot of them are. A lot of them are like, I'm, I love this. I love this because it's yeah. making me. And so like. <laughs> Well, to be, to be fair, to be fair, look at people who like, like I did half marathons. I was vegan. I loved it while I did it. And then I learned that like, you know, actually this is like not super sustainable for me to keep running like this. I want to be able to eat other foods. Like I had to go through those learning periods of like, I did powerlifting. I think it's really fun. I don't want to do it. We have different lives. Like we all just have different lives. Like we were all five. We were all 12. We were all vegans. We were all marathon runners. We're power lifters. We were firefighters. We were coaches. Like we all live these different lives Mm -hmm. versus, um, yeah, I thought I was happy doing that. It's like, no, you were happy doing it. And then you found happiness doing something else. It became not fun anymore. So then there was just a new life. A lot of people, this is kind of going back to what was said earlier, is like a lot of people are really scared to let that identity go. Yeah. Because they think that they're suddenly going to lose a part of themselves. Like I have a lot of friends who like they went into coaching, they're not super successful and they like feel like they've been trying to grind it out for years and they're just like, I don't know if I'm actually happy doing this. And they have other things that they're really passionate about that they like to do. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with not doing it. And they'll keep doing it as like a side hustle. And I'm like, did you ever think that you're actually taking away attention and effort from this other thing that you want to do because you're holding on for dear life to this old version of yourself? Well, that, that's the problem is when your identity is something that can be taken away. Me and Arama talked about this. We had a guest on recently and I confronted them on the identity issue. I'm like, well, if that's your identity, what happens when you can't do that anymore? Because the identity was something physical. You know, showing up every day to the gym, all this kind of stuff versus something that can't be taken away from you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think our identity when it's like my identity is a fitness coach. Mm-hmm. Well, that can be taken away from you. Some mm-hmm. people just might stop hiring you. So now who are you? And I think that that's what people need to really maybe sit with. It's like your identity cannot encompass anything that can be taken from you. Extrinsic. Yeah. We go for the intrinsic motivators. Yeah, yeah I, just, like, I, there, there's there's yeah. validity to that. I think you're you're on to something there, and I think that's to develop that a little bit deeper. Like that your identity, is, your identity could be like to de- to care, to deeply care for people. Yeah, you can just be a, you can and, just be a leader. 
Like Cor- that your identity is I'm a leader, whether I'm leading people towards Correct. health and fitness, whether I'm leading people towards better finances, whether I'm leading people towards learning how to fucking mow your lawn yeah. better. Like you're just leading people. If you're a leader you of people, help. that's who you are. Yeah. You you're a servant. You you're help. a servant to individuals. Like yes. servant servitude is purpose. And if and that's your you purpose, can, great. Yeah, and you can practice that in any way. Yeah. You know, it's like if you're if you're if you're an artist, you can paint, you can draw, you can sculpt, you can act. You can, there's many different ways that you can practice art. It's like, mm-hmm. and you get to choose, you know? So if you're going to help people or care about people and all that, you get to choose. But if the identity is a specific medium, then you're fucked when that medium gets taken from you. Sure. I think one of the the challenges that people face with that is sometimes then they're like, okay, well then what do I do? Or like, but I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't have yeah. any hobbies, anything like that. And the thing I say to people about that is just try something. Yeah. People are so scared to just yeah. try. Like, I know I went through like the things that I've tried. Literally, the only reason I was like, went into firefighting, went into acting, did all these things is because I was just willing to try and I had yeah. no idea how it was going to turn out. And like, look it, I'm not doing any of those things anymore. And that is yeah. okay. Yeah. It doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't mean anything wrong. You just learn from it and you took the lessons and now you move forward. Yeah, I'm similar to that. And if something's in my head and I want to try, I'm like, I have to do it just to yeah. get it out of my head. So yeah. I'm totally fine with failing. I just need to get this fucking idea out of my head. So I have to go do it. And but that's bombs, really good that you recognize cool. that. Most people won't even take action on it. They'll yeah. mull, like hum and haw over it for so long. To. Yeah. And then yeah. they just like hate themselves for it. Yeah. I would much rather do it and fail and go, all right, finally, it's out of my fucking head. I can move on to the next thing. <laughs> like I can't let in this stuff. If I think about something for too long, I'm like, I have to do I have to do this. This is a problem. I have to do it. But I don't care about the consequence. I just, I, 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 I mean, appreciate it. Unless it's meth. Unless it's meth. <laughs> or like If cocaine. I'm like dying to do meth, I'm not going to do it because the consequences aren't worth it. Everyone wasn't, listens and he's just like, yeah, cookies or cocaine, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever wasn't great. you want to do. If you want to be awake for 72 hours, so, then meth, is, meth is your drug, but don't do it. Are we, uh, so the question really is, as we come to the end here, are we calling the episode Cookies and Cocaine? Oh, God. Or Fairy Smut with Alex Allen? No. I I honestly, if you put it as fairy smut, I think a lot of people are going to know exactly what you're talking about, which is fine. I think it's going to be fairy smut. Fairy smut, parentheses, cookies and cocaine. Okay. With. <laughs> I don't think out. I'm the, the connoisseur of cookies and cocaine. You're not. No, that's more me. That's my, that's, that's my department. That's my department. And by the way, for anybody that's listening, uh, Crumble oh, no. has, now a lot, has now announced that they're going to do the smaller version of their cookies all week long. Not just on Mondays, but the mini version of the. I didn't even of the know week. that that was a. Thing. I honestly thought he was going to go down like being like, if you need drugs, I have them. Oh yeah, I yeah, just I do, that's the that's... direction I thought we were going to go. <laughs> no, I, I don't physically have them on me right now, but I have. <laughs> um, I I have celiacs, and I have never tried a crumble cookie in my life. I don't think they do gluten free. They don't. Yeah. So I've never I tried one. That's a blessing. So don't. I am. So don't. Um, are, are you in California? I was born and raised in California. I live in Texas. Oh, you're in Houston, right? Um, they, in what Houston. do they have in Houston? Do they have they have crumble. They have, yeah. But oh, just, don't I'm, worry. When I lived in California, I went to every gluten free bakery because they have a ton. Yeah, they a have ton so there, many. Yeah. 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 And I've actually had some really good gluten free vegan cookies out here because I live in San Diego. Yes. And it's, it's like the. Oh, you're in San Diego in yeah. L.A. Aaron's Bakery. Fire. Aaron's. Okay. Okay. Aaron's Bakery. I'll probably be up there at some point, probably buying drugs. So yeah, that's that'll, fine. that'll work well. I expect nothing um, less. West Hollywood. I did. I did why, want why, to. Why am I still co-hosting with him? <laughs> you can quit at any time. I can take. I can find another. I'll host, take so. over. Yeah, she could find. She's her and I would. No, be I think she meant she would take over for you. She could do that too. I don't. I don't need to do the podcast. I don't care. I have forty four thousand followers. I'm good. I'm done with you. I have forty five thousand followers. I'm done. I have I'm confidence good. and love and family and people that love me. Aram. I don't care about family. He's and like people online love. love me, and that's all that matters. I have two. I have dogs seven and friends. <laughs> Real friends. I drive a I, Dodge Stratus. You do not talk to me like that. I drive. I, used to, I, I drive I used a Dodge to. Stratus. Used to have a Dodge Stratus, actually. I don't real, even know what real, a Dodge Stratus is. It's just a, yeah. it's just a, a beautiful a car that was invented back in the late '90s, early 2000s. My mother had. I don't even know. Anyway, nice, nice thick body, like I'm big, a Toyota big fan. back end. Yeah, mm. you would. You like the Asians. 
This is where we clearly decline, Alex. No, I was actually I, before uh, before you before you another question before you started to verbally abuse me on on our episode as you to, tend to towards the end of it because you start to get sick of me. Actually Just don't forget about the love. You. There He's was like, love the at the beginning. I just want to go there to the love beach. love at the beginning. There, you, you're not far from the beach. You're by the Gulf Coast. I'm at the beach right now. No, so oh, yeah, you're, there. well, you're, you're by. Jim a, was like, a, I was just, I'm at the beach. That's what he said before he got on. Yeah. Yes. And that's why I was like, beach. that's why he wants I'm to get off. He's like, I want to go to the beach. What I was going to say to Alex it's is actually I was going to say that I, I appreciate her journey and her transformation from being somebody who masked and found every reason not to feel and found every reason to thwart her attention away from how she felt and then going through all these different careers and trying to figure shit out and doing everything so imperfectly and so kind of just fucked up and now she's here and that's the kind of that's the perfect type of person to lead others because she's done it imperfectly and now she can impart that wisdom onto other people who are trying to do these things perfectly or never start because they want to be perfect so i just wanted to say that i just I think that you are the perfect type of coach that we need more of in this industry. So thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. That means a lot. And I, I try my best to be a good example of that and to just help other people do the same, like not even just other people who want to like do their fitness journey, but other coaches too, because I think that there are a lot of really crappy coaches out there and I, I don't want like, these are people's lives. And yeah. so I think that it's important to remember like why you do the thing you do, whether it's health and fitness or whether it's helping other people. I'm an ENFJ, so I'm the protagonist. Ah, the tracks. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know what that is. I do. That's 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 our friend Casey Joe as well. She's an ENFJ. Myers Briggs. Yeah. Yeah. I was I forgot. I was think I was like I something. I forgot. I'll have to that's look the back intellect. at it. I'm an O negative. <laughs> Whoops. I'm just kidding. That's your <laughs> You're psilocybin. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, who you become over the next dozen years. You got a lot of evolution. I'm excited. Maybe we'll meet okay. one day. I won't, I won't be around for 12, but dozens a long time. Maybe Jesus a half Christ. a dozen. I'll see you then. I wasn't talking to you anyway. Nobody's I'll excited to the, you're I'll come to the next Real Coaches Summit. Beth was mad Please. at me because I didn't Please. go. It was my friend's Please. wedding. So that was... Why wasn't that? Uh, were you in it? No, but it was in the Caymans. So no excuse. Okay. It was in the oh, Caymans. Caymans, that's nice. So I'm you went there. You, over Vegas. you went there. Are you kidding you, me? <laughs> you went there. You laundered, you laundered your money and you came home. Uh, yeah, that's exactly. Got it. What I did. Perfect. That's why. Oh, trust me, I get it. I understand. That's a joke. I don't, I'm scared of legal ramifications from your podcast. Nobody. The, trust me. Nobody important listens to this show. <laughs> Nobody that would ever get you in trouble, that would ever get That's offended. Weird. Like the people that listen to this show are as degenerate and dysfunctional as we are. And that's why we have the beautiful my, audience that we have. That we yeah, love our mom, audience and we respect mom, our audience. My mom works for the IRS, but she's a big fan of not reporting people. So it works out well for you. Right. Yeah. She does <laughs> our taxes. Your mom just gets fired. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't work for the IRS. Um. Anyway. Ask her our last question. So. Oh. Have you listened to an entire episode yet? I haven't. I actually listened okay. to like half. I actually listened to Casey Smart. Joe's episode and a couple other Smart. ones, and I listened to like half of it. Shocking. Um, listen to the first ten minutes of my, Dr. Mike Israel tells, and then the last, <laughs> and then the last twenty minutes. That was why the first. Okay, fine. I'll listen to it because it was a night. It was a, the most beautiful nightmare. First ever. ten, fifteen minutes, then like the last half hour. It's fantastic. Um, so our final question: We ask all of our guests to compare you and judge you next to all the other guests you okay. ask i'm gonna you ask, ask you a them question to do that no i'm gonna oh, no, ask you a question me. okay and your response we will then oh, use gosh. to judge me. you <laughs> and compare you to every I post other online i i get judged all the time so you're yeah, fine well get ready and then we always do like a follow-up episode where we compare and judge all right are you ready bye